From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. One more Corner Pocket. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunch of Andy and Corey Clark. Wake up! It's Wake Up Board Jam presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill coming up on today's show. First scrimmage of the spring. We're not there, but Coach Norvell broke it down. We try to read between the lines. A full seven-round mock draft dropped on ESPN.com. Some nulls on there. We'll talk about that. And baseball continue to exercise some demons after an impressive win over Louisville on Thursday night. Wake Up Board Jam presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, Tallahassee, Florida. CPTallyBar.com. 2475 Appalachian Parkway. Lunch special today is chicken strip basket, ham breaded chicken strips served with a dipping sauce or toss in a sauce if you're choosing. That's how it goes down at the corner pocket on a Friday, 11 to 3 p.m. Only $8.99 comes with a side dish of your choosing as well. Take advantage. Always a good time. Always good food. Corner pocket bar and grill. Live entertainment. Vegas wall cranking out NCAA tournament games all day, all afternoon, all night long. Go check it out over at the corner pocket bar and grill. Check out Warchant.com, the ultimate sell sports source. Five-star rating and review, please. Thumbs up on the YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube page as well. Also, that second YouTube page we got now, the, the Warchant press room. Some of the other stuff that, uh, you know, might get lost in the shuffle of all the, the content we're cranking out over on the, the main page gets uh, housed over there. So subscribe to that as well. Totally free of charge. Totally free of charge. Corey Clark, what's up, man? How are you, friend? What's up, buddy? How are you doing? Not well. Not well. Oh. Why? Yeah, you know, a Thursday night got torpedoed. So the the whole thing this tournament has been, all right, I'll make a parlay, guys, like in, in our mm. group chat. I'll make a parlay. Yeah. I just need one of you guys needs to pick one of those picks that I have and be like, nope. And then either delete it and give us something else or take the other side on it. So I felt really good about the Thursday one I set up. And first game right out the shoot, I'm like, I kind of want to take Clemson straight up as a dog. But let's just do the seven and a half. And I lay out the parlay and my one buddy who credit to him now on the first day of the tournament, when I laid out our parlay, he's like, I want to take Oakland my uh, plus 13 and a half or whatever it was. I'm like, okay, all right. And he was right. So it's, it's okay. It's okay. These things happen. But yeah, he told me to, he was the one who's like, yeah, let's, let's take Arizona minus seven and a half. I'm like, ah, okay. And you know, it was over before it even started. So <laughs> well, sorry, buddy. Yeah, I just I love this time of year. And last weekend was weird because I went home, uh, you know, bereavement, helped out my mom who lost her mom, aka my grandma. So I'm like, all right, this weekend I'm I'm dialed in. We're gonna win. This is good stuff. And then like right out the gate, like blah. And I don't have a really good feel for today's games. I like Tennessee minus two and a half. This is like the my bookie read, I guess, right now. Yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and get it out of the way. I like them. I kind of want to take NC State straight up, but let's let's go plus six and a half. But I have no feeling on Purdue, Gonzaga, and Duke, Houston. Purdue only being favored by five and a half it seems like very suspicious to me. Well then, hey, put your money where your mouth is, I know. Mister Suspicious. <laughs> I know, I know. But anyways, how are you, man? How was your Thursday? Uh, I was all right. Uh, we did, uh, you know. Uh, How'd Brady watch, do? How'd Brady do? Uh, not great. Okay. Not great. Don't want to talk about it, honestly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, not great. Uh, but you know, we got to we got to hear about a scrimmage. Yeah, we did. Uh, the 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 Florida State baseball team won again, two in a row. The softball team won on a walk off mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. one of those crazy talented freshmen. So uh, yeah, all in all, a good day. Show won't be as long as we anticipated. A little change of protocol this year. We're not getting coordinators after scrimmages. But we'll get them at some point this spring. Every single coach, every single coordinator is scheduled to speak to us after uh, some practice. So all we got was Norvell after Thursday's first scrimmage. Um, you know, I think that caught, caught some of us off by off guard that we weren't going to get everybody, and then it, we only got for like twelve minutes. So maybe not as much to talk about as we had hoped and anticipated. But I guess let's start with the quarterbacks. Uh, head coach didn't seem that stoked, but again, it's it's the first scrimmage. Was there anything you were able to see or hear between the lines, Corey, you think about how they performed? Yeah, I think between the lines was uh, it didn't sound like uh, DJ had a great effort, great performance, um, because immediately, and if you and it, look, we don't get to watch scrimmages, not complaining, just telling you all why we can't tell you for sure what it was because we weren't there. Right. But the way he, when he was asked about the quarterbacks, was like, well, look, Brock is supposed to be ahead. He, he essentially said, you know, 
Brock has been in this system for a full for a full year now, so it shouldn't be a surprise that he might be a little bit ahead. He's more used to the system. Uh, blah blah blah. Whatever he said. Um, and it, so I I thought that was telling, didn't you? That like he he brought up the fact that and he said, look, they all had good plays and bad plays. Uh, DJ had some really good plays, but then he was like, and then he kind of reverted back to some uh, bad footwork and bad fundamentals. Uh, but he's like, you know, that's why we do these. We, we, these are real, these are important reps and these are why they do them. But it, it did sound like, uh, uh, DJ wasn't exceptional, uh, on Thursday, but it's, uh, you know, what was it? It's March 29th. Yeah. So, you know, you'd rather him not be exceptional on March 29th than August 24th. What does it say though, when he talks about some of the things, maybe getting away from DJ and, and, and him like reverting back to, to bad footwork is, is that a concern because that's probably something that's plagued him throughout his career, or do we feel like, well, at least that's something that's probably stemming from not being totally comfortable with maybe the scheme and the protection and who you're throwing the ball to, and that's hopefully something correctable? Yeah, I, I, I definitely think it's something correctable. Um, you know, I, I, I think that sometimes maybe when you feel pressure, you do things with your feet that you shouldn't, or, uh, you know, they, when he's on the run, uh, maybe he didn't, he didn't, do something fundamentally correctly that that Tokars and Norvell want to see that they're trying to instill in him, but as as Norvell pointed out, you know he's been it's this was his fifth day, um, and he did say that, but it, it sounded like I'm pretty sure I, I I got the gist of it that he had been really really pleased with Brock Glenn and DJ through the first four practices. He's like, they've been really, really good. And he said like a laugh as he was saying it. Like they had surprised him how good they had been. Uh, but then it sounded like on the fifth day, um, it, it didn't go as well when they were at, at Doe Campbell Stadium. Uh, under, under, Well, I guess they weren't under the lights. Daylight the savings and all, it was yeah. fine. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so it didn't sound like it went as – and, you know, look, that's when – you, when you feel the pressure, whether somebody's in your face or just the pressure of the moment, so you revert back to – Sometimes you can revert back to bad habits. That's why you want to build great habits, and you work on those, and that's why they practice all the time, over and over and over. Uh, don't practice till you can't do it wrong. Don't mm. practice till you don't do it wrong, Aslan. Right. Practice till you can't. No, I got I, I keep. I'm screwing it up. <laughs> practice. Don't practice until you get it right. Yeah. Practice until you can't get it wrong. There you go. There you go. I figured it out. Third time's a charm, gang. That's why I was always a great motivational speech uh, speaker. Um, so. I, I just think that's probably what it was. Maybe reverting back to some stuff that they uh, that that he's done in his career, and they're just trying to get that out of him. Thoughts on Jimbo being a Planet Fitness guy? Shocked, personally. Yeah, and that was a real photo on the internet, right? Of yeah. him being a Planet Fitness. Yeah, it's not that I judge. I, well, I I just would have judgment thought, free zone. It's a judgment free sure. zone. Sure, and we all we all uh, and look. We we're 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 big uh, Orange Theory. Slash anytime fitness fans, yeah. but uh, um, I just thought when you're Jimbo and you have the money you have, I would have thought he had his own home gym yeah. with everything he could possibly need. But c- credit to him for going out and doing it. Mm. Yeah. Like I, I that to me is says more than him even trying to like really get in shape again. Because back in the day, back when uh, maybe 15 or 16, whenever the the life changes started happening. Yeah. He got in really good shape. Mm. Uh, so good, good, good on him for trying to get back there and do it. Uh, it's just, I, I would have, and, and to go out in public, <laughs> like part of me is like, all right, Jimbo, you're not afraid. It's your town too, buddy. Yeah. All right. You're, you're just a dude working out. Uh, but I, I, I was surprised that he has a membership at a gym. I thought he could, I mean, literally he could build his own planet fitness mm. and you know, he, he, yeah, he should. Some offensive highlights, if you will. Luane McCoy yeah. uh, apparently yeah. made a handful of nice plays. Landon Thomas also was. Landon Thomas was the first one he mentioned. Yeah. Other than uh, like other than Malik Benson and Cam Davis, who scored touchdowns, we don't know of what variety or how. Um, I guess Malik Benson's was a short touchdown catch where he had to do some running. But other than that, um, Landon Thomas was the very first one he mentioned, I thought, I, if I'm remembering yes, correctly, right. out of you're everybody. Right. You're right. Uh, but Cam Davis yeah, him, and Malik Benson also had touchdowns. It was good to hear him volunteer Landon Thomas. Uh, he, I don't know if it's a good or a bad, like he looks like a tweener to me. Like he does not look like a wide receiver, but he doesn't look like he's big enough to be a tight end, but maybe that's the, the beauty of what he could possibly be for this offense. 
Yeah, I mean, you got to assume he's going to grow. Um, yeah, yeah. And he's not a small kid. He's he's pretty put together. And you, you got to imagine by by this time next year, it's 15 pounds. Imagine that body mm-hmm. frame with 15 more pounds of, like, muscle on it. And still moving. Yeah. And still it, it, you know, hoping, you know, theoretically he's moving as well then as he is right now. That is a scary proposition. That guy um, – I noticed him on the very first day. He just – because the tight ends run all the same. The tight ends will work with the quarterbacks uh, just by themselves. Then the receivers will go and work with the quarterbacks. And it is just a different burst off the line of scrimmage with Landon Thomas than any of the other wide receivers. How about Malik Benson? Um, I mean, good for him to score the touchdown. Yeah, I guess, you know, Ira's asking about uh, just the way that he's kind of performing the expectations. And the fact that – Norvell admitted that they had big expectations for him. Is that something you think he would say if he had not been playing well or or living up to any? That's at this point in the season and this point in the spring, it's it's hard to really gauge guys and you know get a true sense for how the coaches are feeling about them. But when he comes out and says to this guy that's only been on campus for however long it's been, like yeah, man, we had really big expectations for him. Um, like that kind of that that seems like strong praise. I mean, I know that's not him actually performing anything, but the fact that they had expectations, high level expectations for a guy who didn't really do a lot at his last stop. Uh, that, that was uh, one of the, the bigger takeaways I had from Thursday's post scrimmage interview. Yeah. You know, he said he, he certainly hasn't been disappointed, but you know, that's the, the, that sounds like a, not even a, it's a very lukewarm compliment, but the question was phrased from Ira essentially like, has he been all you thought he was going to be? And he's like, well, look, we had, as Aslan just alluded to, he said we had really high expectations for him, like really high. Um, and he has not been a disappointment there. Uh, you know, it's, I, I think it's great. Uh, it, it, this is a sink or swim season for him. Like he kind of got lost in the shuffle at Alabama. There also wasn't really any pressure on him. Like you know, he started sure, but you know it was the it was the Bond kid, and then the uh, the yeah the kid that transferred from Georgia, right? Yeah, Jermaine. Uh, yeah, he he wasn't expected to do much, and he didn't do much. And there can be some uh, comfort in that when you're not expected to be the guy. You know, sometimes it's fun to be the number three or number four receiver, just like it's fun to be the backup quarterback or the long. You're not the, no. There's a lot of pressure on long snappers, uh, a middle reliever. Um, there's not the same pressure that comes with being a closer. Well, Malik Benson comes into this situation, and, you know, he is expected to be um, a starter. And, you know, there's the ceiling there where potentially he's a star. So this is some real pressure for him in a money year um, if he chooses. So so it's good to hear. I'll also say this. I'll be just straight honest about it. Through four practices, I haven't been wowed by him. He's been fine. He hasn't been bad. Yeah. I've, you know, I'd rather be. It's not like I've been wowed in a bad way. Uh, I just have not been wowed by him. I think Destin Hill, um, and Jalen I mean, Brown, Jalen Brown, uh, Jakai. I think those guys have been a little bit more productive just in what I've watched. Um, I know that Azaria has handcuffed Malik Benson a few times and certainly isn't shy about telling him about it. Um, and I, I would like to see Malik Benson start to live up to, I want to be the number one wide receiver. I'm sure he wants to, but go and do it. Uh, and maybe score – I mean, I'm not I'm not diminishing this. Maybe scoring a touchdown in a scrimmage is just what he needs to be unlocked. Mm. Again, he hasn't – I don't want people to think he's been a disappointment. He really hasn't. He just hasn't been a star. And you got to figure one of these guys is going to be a star. Right now, I'm leaning towards uh, Destin Hill. But that's through four practices and a scrimmage I didn't see. So, again – that's the caveat. Two weeks from now, I might be singing Malik Benson's praises as if he's the next Keon. Mm. Like a fat. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say he's a faster Keon. Yeah. yeah, I get it. We all love offense. We love scoring points. Uh, I'm. I'm part of that. That group as well. And I know things didn't start off all that well for Adam Fuller at his tenure here at Florida State. But when we hear the way that Norvell talked about and almost, you know, resigned to the fact that maybe the defense won the day. Mm-hmm. Like, do we have to conditions our, our, our condition ourselves? And I know they lost a lot of talent on the defense. We'll talk about it too. One of those uh, full seven round mock drop from our guy Matt Miller over at ESPN.com. We'll oh, get him well, on the our show. Guy. That, yeah, let's please get him on the show. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would be fun. Um, Eleven Florida State guys, only nine Alabama guys. We'll uh, maybe talk about that a little bit later here. But how many Michigan guys? The team that would have beaten Florida State by forty. Florida, I haven't looked that one up. Maybe I can yeah. look it up uh, when we do our, our talk and our chat, our organic chat about our friends over at Vitamin Energy. Right. Um, 
but when you hear about DJ Lundy looking the way they expect, you know, they need him to look, and we've seen DJ Lundy and, and the way he's looked here in the early part of practices, you know, he talks about, I think Marvin Jones got some praise. Pat Payne got some praise. You know, we're always wanting a great offense to lead the way, but is there a chance that this could be another, especially the second half of the last season, the defense really was the, the heartbeat of this team. Could we be on the path for that again, Corey? Do we need to embrace that culture or, or not culture, but, uh, you know, season our minds? Expectations? To- yeah, I, I think so. I mean, again, it's, it's to me it comes down to the, uh, the, the D-line. Um, I think the secondary is going to be good if it stays healthy. Azarie uh, and Fintrell, that's a that's a very solid to good one-two cornerback combo. Uh, there is a chance this year's starting cornerback combination, cornerback combination, will be better than last year's starting cornerback combination. Because I think is and I love Renardo Green, and I hope he plays ten years in the league. I think he's going to get drafted. There is a chance, not a small one, that. 2024 is R.E.A. Thomas is better than 2023 Renardo Green. And you have to assume that 2024 Fentrell Cypress is better than 2023 Fentrell Cypress. So, anyway, all that being said, and I, I brought that, I brought Cypress up because apparently, uh, Aslan, I'm looking at the, because uh, we didn't hear a lot of info from, uh, from Mike Norvell, but our man Adam Fuller gets on Twitter mm. and tells us about mission takeaways. Nice. Fentrell Cypress had an interception. All right. The period is called seven shot, which I don't know what that means. Okay. But apparently Fentrell had an interception. Ashlyn Barker had a forced fumble. Jabril Rawls had a fourth down PBU. Grady Kelly had a blocked field goal. Ooh. Looks like A.J. Cottrell, the uh, linebacker, had a fumble recovery. That, AKA, that the, A.K.A. the pest. He is a absolute pest. Uh, Devontae Brown, the safety, had an interception in uh, seven shot. So two interceptions. Uh, uh, two, uh, at least one force fumble, maybe two force fumbles. But, yeah, um, I think when you look at the defensive line, how good is Marvin Jones and how good is Lola Hea? Yeah. And what kind of leaps? I think – here's what I think. I think right now we know that Patrick Payton and Daryl Jackson – this is what I think. Again, you guys have not seen Daryl Jackson play uh, other than a, a – "Quote unquote bowl game." You have not seen Daryl Jackson play. I think he and Patrick Payton are bona fide absolute NFL draft picks. I don't think there's any question about it. I think Lola Hea is probably a draft pick, but I want to see it. Don't know anything about Marvin. Can those two guys? Can Marvin take a step into being an All ACC ish caliber defensive end? We don't know what his ceiling is. And then what about Josh Farmer? What does he bring? Uh, he's obviously out for the spring, but I think that has a chance to be a dynamic front four with a, with different ways to beat you, man. You got Patrick and Jones who are kind of speed guys. Lola Hea isn't a speed guy, but is a power dude. Maybe somebody else can develop. Byron Turner overdrive can take a step, whatever. I think when you look at the totality of this defense, uh, even losing first Burst and Fisk, which are enormous losses, and those line, you know, I, I, all of that was to say. Maybe not Aslan because I don't think the linebackers are going to be as good. <laughs> All right, well, I don't know how much that's going to affect the overall. I wonder though when he those guys were those guys were more important than we probably gave them credit for. Probably, uh, but yeah. Bethune making that pick in the in the championship game, Deloach doing what he did. You know, I know right, he was banged up right. some, but he had some really big moments for that team. And they were such senior; they were so experienced. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that that's what I wonder. That kind of stuff is taken for granted a lot. But talent for talent, like I said, the two deep, uh, it, it, it can be another really, really good defense. Yeah, when he says aggressiveness to the ball helped cause the fumbles, we're emphasizing that as much as we probably ever have. Ever have, yeah. You know, I just wonder, like, if it'll maybe be more of a, I don't want to say a feast or famine, and I'm not trying to say like a lockdown defense, but maybe they'll create more, you know, takeaways. Maybe they'll be able to, you know, generate more TFLs, things like that. And yes, there might be some more busts, uh, yeah. which obviously you don't want to see, but maybe that'll not even things out, but maybe that keeps you just a step ahead if you're able to create uh, these amount of turnovers. And I know it's not like a, a, a thing that you can really replicate season over season, but this is a whole new year with a whole new uh, pretty much core of guys on defense. So maybe if they really are emphasizing creating fumbles and everybody running to the ball, uh, you know that, that, that might bite them in the butt sometimes, but if they can create 
Uh, turnovers in, in the close games, like a Clemson or, or something like that, they can change the tide of a game and, and, and affect their uh, their outcome and their fortunes upcoming. Well, it, it also like um, you you just wonder like we and I do I I fall victim of this as much as anybody. But what if what if Shaheen Brown is better than he's ever been? Yeah. Man. What if he becomes an All ACC type safety or better than that? Um, what if Azaria is a is le, a legitimate top twenty pick? Um, which I think he has the talent to be. Again, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but, man, I just get some Ramsey vibes off of him. Uh, the way he runs, the athletic ability, the confidence. Uh, he's not as physical as Jalen was, but I, I just think he has a chance to be an early-round pick. Um, and, and we don't know what the safety is going to be. I meant to mention, though, because he got an interception. He is somebody we have not talked about one iota. But Devontae Brown. Yeah. has had a few flash plays for me in practice where he is triggered on running plays and thumped really quickly. And then today he had a uh, – I don't know if he's going to be a starting safety or not. I don't know if the portal will be open for a position like that after the spring. Uh, but I, I have been impressed with him in a, with a few flash, uh, flash plays already this spring, and then he had an interception in the scrimmage. So that's that bodes kind of well too, I think. He's an experienced guy, right? He played oh, yeah. a good bit at UCF, right? He's played a lot of football. He's played a lot. Was of he play. UCF, right? Miami, I think most recently. I think he might have oh, started right. at UCF and then gone yeah. to Miami, and now he's here doing the doing the Florida tour. Yeah. So shout out to him. Vitamin Energy, vitaminenergy.com. It works faster and longer. Energy with benefits. It's clinically tested, clinically proven. Go to vitaminenergy.com. Use the promo code WordChamp Bogo. WordChamp B O G O. Buy one item, get one of equal or lesser value, you know, everybody, for free. How about the Hydration Plus? Blue raspberry flavor. Nice. It's got electrolytes in it, everybody. Helps you rehydrate a little bit better. Maybe some of the things you're doing this weekend will get you a little bit groggy when you wake up the next morning. Maybe you want to grab coffee, but then you got to get up and you got to brew it and then you got to clean the pot out and, and, you know, all that stuff. Right. Or you can just, just grab a shot. Because you'll have to take a sports drink, too, after you drink your coffee. The coffee ain't going to hydrate you. Or you can take a shot of Vitamin Energy's Hydration Plus and get all the energy you need, 260 milligrams of all-natural caffeine and electrolytes and nutrients to help hydrate yourself. It's worth a shot, right? Shake it and take it. Try it, you'll like it. VitaminEnergy.com. Promo code is WarChant BOGO. Let's get to that mock draft course, shall we? Oh, all right. I mean, you know, all, all jokes aside, he literally did a, a full seven round every single pick mock draft. Matt Miller, ESPN.com. This isn't just a shot at Matt Miller. It's not a shot at Matt Miller. It's a shot at this uh, industry, this industry, I guess. After the 55th or 60th pick, you still got 200 more to go. <laughs> How much real thought are you yeah. putting into the fifth round? How dialed in is he? Yeah. yeah, the Jags are picking fifth. Are you just going down a list and saying, "Oh, I haven't put him anywhere yet. Let me slot him here," or you know, this team needs another two here? Like it's just that the first round I can get, even the first two rounds, I think there's there's some probably some validity to it. After that, I mean, it's literally just no. I mean, that is a, that is just a straight guessing game. Well, we do a top forty, and after the top ten, it's it's a guessing game as well, too. We got we got to make content. We got to feed the machine here. We got to feed the beast. We're not going to give all of it away because it's behind a paywall. But a couple of the more interesting aspects. What? It's here. not behind our paywall. What do we care? I you know. What, you Is know. ESPN going to sue us? Well, you know, just just trying to be courteous. I hope they wouldn't take a whole a entire Corey Clark column and read it to their podcast folk. Actually, I would. Yeah, that'd be awesome, right? They don't, don't read. ESPN doesn't read. You're right. The, the the two interesting things I, I wanted to touch on and whatever you want to ask me since I have it pulled up here over on my end, I can look things up. He does have Jordan Travis getting drafted. He's got 11 Knowles. Yeah. So he's got everybody other than Tatum Bethune getting drafted. From the from the combine. Yes. Yeah. I also think there's a chance that Akeem Dent sneaks in there, honestly. Yeah. But, yeah, so the, those are the two. They're potentially 13 draft picks. I think 11, 10 to 11 is probably more uh, likely. So for every round, he has his favorite prospect uh, for the fit he sees them going to, again, in his mock. So he's got Jordan Travis getting drafted in the sixth round by your Atlanta Falcons. Amen, brother. Amen. Um, and, you know, says that uh, they don't have anybody really in the wings 
behind Kirk Cousins. This would be a great sort of fit, obviously. Calls Jordan a gamer who battled through a shoulder injury early in the season before a broken leg ended his season. A touch thrower with good mobility worthy of a late-round flyer. The positive. Also going in the sixth round, 219th overall, he's got Johnny Wilson. I, he's got to... I, I, I want to dive into as many mocks as I can to see where... That sounds crazy to me. After that, I mean, 6-7, ran a 4-5 and change at the, in Indy? Yeah. And I, produced at the college level and made some incredibly contested, tough catches. Uh, and it, that, that size isn't going away. Like, you never, it's just, it's there. He's not going to shrink. So that's always going to be a, a part of who he is. And it's always going to be <clears throat> impossible for six, one corners to deal with. Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're talking about the sixth round, which I, I just don't. And again, it's not a shot at him. A mock draft was seven rounds but before April. I, I just don't put a lot of stock into anything that's in there. Like we could go back and see, he might've nailed it. I would be stunned personally if Johnny Wilson Last until the sixth round. I, I just think he's a guy that immediately, um, if he's on the if he's in the right offense, is going to be a guy that gets on the field just because it's a matchup problem. It's just a matchup problem. Uh, but you know, I also know there are questions about him. Uh, first and foremost, the hands. Although I I don't think he dropped anything at the combine when he did the position drills, and then I saw him. I watched him firsthand on Friday, and Keon dropped two. Johnny didn't drop any including one that was by his ankles. Uh, it was a really nice catch. I, I thought he looked good, really good at his pro day. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's it's just – I would, wouldn't would you be stunned? What, I, I can't even imagine – what is that, 35 receivers going in front of him? Yeah, I mean – Probably if you're if you're deep into the sixth round, I, that would be – I'm not saying it's wrong. It hadn't happened yet. It could be, could be completely uh, justified. I, I would be – I just think that that seems outlandish as we sit here in late March. He's got Anthony Gould from Oregon State going ahead of him in the sixth round. He has um, Xavier Weaver from Colorado going ahead of him in the sixth round. Uh, shoot, he's got Jaheim going ahead of him, 190th overall. All right. Okay. I know they're different positions, but, man, if I need a pass catcher, I, th I think I'm getting Johnny before I'm, I'm taking Jaheim. But maybe you feel there's more receivers out there, and, and Jaheim might be a little bit more rare and unique uh, of a unicorn for you. Not there. really. Nope. He yeah, isn't. No. <laughs> There's nobody more of a unicorn than the six seven kid that ran a four five two. Yeah. Um Michigan I counted sixteen he's got. He's got 16. Oh uh, then they would have won by forty. I, uh -huh. I take it all back. They would have been, they would have probably had thirty five at the half <laughs> and then probably just you they Harbaugh's a nice guy. He would have throttled it down. There's a there's a championship game coming, whatever it is, seven, eight days later. So he throttles it down when they're up 35 to nothing at the half. He's got Fisk going in the second round. Yeah. 42nd overall. Um, that sounds about right to me. I, I'd love to see him jump into the first. Uh, Braden's doing the rounds on all the cool podcasts out there, so maybe that'll help create some buzz. But uh, right now as we sit here, uh, do, you, do you think Braden – Braden Keon, which one of those guys do you think is more likely to go first round? He's got Keon going second round as well, but like 34th overall, so the second guy taken off the board. You know, if it's just a matter of uh like what what these what these decision makers value is it what they saw on the field or is it what they saw um in shorts in Indianapolis? Because Keon I actually that's not true. I think Keon because as uh I don't know where I saw this. I saw it on Twitter. Maybe Matt Miller said it too. I don't remember. That Keon's miles per hour GPS during the position drills at the combine was the fastest of any wide receiver there. Yep. Yep. He puts that in the uh the so, report on him. Yep. Again, some people play faster than they test. And Keon is certainly one of those guys. And I think that would be something that NFL teams would care about. Then okay, he ran a four six. That doesn't scare me because he was at whatever twenty one miles per hour when he was doing these drills. And I'm telling you, I, I again, I don't have the eye for it. This isn't my job. But watching him on Friday, I know he dropped a couple, but he was moving exceptionally well because he's six four. He doesn't move like a six four guy coming in and out of breaks. That's what's so. That's what I always have to check myself about. It's like yeah, not only does he look really quick and fast and uh, quick twitch. But he's also the size of like a shooting guard. He's 6'4", 
or six four and a half or whatever he is. Yeah, he's six three. I, th- I think they I think they took an inch away from him at the combine. Don't believe it. Hey, what's he was he wearing cleats? <laughs> what's he in cleats, Aslan? He's six four, so I'm calling him six four. Uh, uh, Miller so, Miller says uh, his combine forty time disappointing at four six one, but his GPS recorded speed during position drills was tops in his group, and he plays fast. Calls him an elite elite post up player at six three two hundred thirteen pounds. So I would, but that said, Fisk has been so good in the off season stuff. And, and look, he was really good at the end of the season too. It's not like he's a workout wonder. He. He was awesome against. I mean, he was unbelievable against Louisville. He, it's crazy he wasn't the MVP, and he was really good against Florida. He was he was good all year, but he really turned it on late in the year. Um, I just don't know at that side. Are, are defensive tackles guys you draft that early? Um, not the if they're not round? Aaron Donald, man. You know, I, yeah, I just don't you know. I mean, you're but you're thinking about okay, it's a good player. It's a good yes. team. Yes. It's a but I'm saying it's a good team that would be drafting him late in the first round. Right. It's somebody that was in the playoffs, somebody that probably won a playoff game. So the 28th team drafting, they might think that's a guy that could put send us over the top. Like the Chiefs, I think Braden Fisk could help the Chiefs. Mm. But then again, Keon Coleman probably could too. So I don't know. It's a good question. I don't know the answer. I guess I would say Keon right now. Okay. Folks, uh, Doak Campbell Stadium under construction, as you know, being renovated. Uh, the West Stands have been demolished. Mm. They're doing some big time work. You can see all of it followed along over the boosters page. Then we got some photos. Shout out to our guy uh, James Warren, aka Jam Nolfin, on the Warchant.com Tribal Council, posting photos of the construction here uh, of late. The Battle's End partnered up uh, with, I guess, an auctioneer fella, uh, not an auctioneer fella, but a, a marketer. So okay. you can buy pieces of the stadium. Yeah, uh, the brick and mortar that was actually used to construct those those stands, those, th- that hollowed ground in Leon County in Tallahassee, Florida. Even the bleachers, some of the signs also available. Uh, it's two hundred fifty bucks for a brick in a case. It's going yeah. to Battle's End though, so it's it's gonna you know it's gonna help replenish and, and yeah. And pay I, for I, don't, I don't think I like that tone. I don't think I like that price. <laughs> well, right. I, like I don't the think ble- they're. I don't I think, think they're aiming think at you, bleacher. big dog. I don't think I, they're aiming for you. I don't think they are either. I, I, I think I'd rather take the bleacher. So it looks like it's probably about a foot by. It's like one foot by one foot. They've got the dimensions on there. I should pull it up and, and give you the accurate what information. What bricks are they talking about? Just a brick, or like your? Because I I know uh, I my name is on a brick. No, uh, not by that. the Moore Center. Not yeah. those things. No, right? no, no. I mean, okay. it it's a brick, but it's it's got mortar on it too, though, and in, in in like concrete. So it's I don't think it's a a nice cleanly you know uh produced sanded down brick it's right. just, i guess that's what they're referring it to as in the, in the listing or whatever they call it for uh purchasing this sort of stuff but yeah i think i'd rather save the 50 i think the bleacher would actually be cooler even though i've never sat in that bleacher but right. like you know i'm all about wall art over like something i would put on a desk or a, or a table uh what would you go would Corey clark go 250 for for the brick and mortar or would he go for 200 dollars in the aluminum and the bleacher can you get like a like a women's restroom sign? They have exit signs and section signs. Like what section did your father sit in? See if they were doing the other side, if they're doing the east stand. Yes, correct. And it had the section numbers that were student seating in a heartbeat. I I think they're three hundred dollars for those signs. I would I would I'd fight somebody to to pay three hundred dollars to get the section three because I think that's that's one of the students st- seating sections that I would I sat in when I was a kid. I would definitely want, if they were doing that, my dad's season tickets that he had all those years, but I can't remember. I know where it is in the stadium. I don't know what section it is, though. I mean, I know it's across from the press box, so they're not they're not screwing with those. Yeah. But I, I could see getting those, like, like getting those four seats, that bleacher that consists of those four seats. Uh, I just don't, I don't remember what. I know it was row 69. And you're probably asking yourself, Corey, how do you remember that? That's weird. You, yeah. you don't remember the section or the – but, uh, yeah, I do remember that. I don't even remember the seat numbers, but I remember that. Um, but, I, yeah, because that would be co- – I would actually – I would make Brady sit in one of them while he's watching the game. Nice. He'd, he'd sit in the, you know, seat 11 and uh, watch the game, but I don't remember what uh, what what, what uh, seats he had or even what section it were. But, anyway, yeah, I, I would get the bleachers, I think. Oh, if I was wow. going to get something, but it's all kind of, I mean, it's all kind of cool and it makes sense. Like 
Why throw it away? Like absolutely, that, absolutely. But the I thing just, that I like about it is it's forward thinking, and it's like you know what? If they were smart, whoever was running the university, and I'm going to say 1995. What did y'all do with the damn spirit spear? What did y'all do with it? Y'all could have sold that for $100,000 to some weirdo fan. I've asked multiple people where that thing is. Nobody knows. Nobody knows who took it down, where it went. Is it still around? Is it in a garage somewhere? Was it burned? Was it destroyed? Did they take it to the dump? Nobody knows. But if they, they should have thought about that stuff back then. So I like the idea of... We're all, we're not gonna just throw this all away. Like this stuff means stuff to people. I like that. I like I like that. Whoever had the idea, I don't know. I know the battles in Ingram. Uh, it's such a it's a because it means something to us, man. It means something to people that went to these games, like you, Aslan, when you were a student, yeah. or me when I was a kid. Like those memories matter. Oh yeah. And there have been people that have been sitting in those seats for generations, have been going into those women's bathrooms for <laughs> generations. <laughs> Let them have their memorabilia. Yeah. Man, dude, there was two pages worth of memorabilia. It, there is now only five items left for sale. One of them is a emergency public telephone sign. One is a sign. <laughs> Get that. What's that going for? 150 bucks, man. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. Somebody else go for that one. Uh, there's a sign that's uh, with an arrow telling you ramp to rows 40 through 86. Okay. All right. That's cool. For 300 bucks. And then, yeah, there's 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 piece of bleacher. Then there's actually a, a bleacher with two legs. So you could put like that in your man cave and actually sit on it. Mm -hmm. That one's 600 bucks. And then the brick, which is 249.99, so 250. Right. Yeah, I think like th that hunk of aluminum would look would look really cool. You know, not even in a man cave. Yeah, it's got to be a man cave. You can't put that yeah. in your living room. I, I yeah, could put it in correct. my living room probably because I don't have anything on my walls. But, um, yeah, I think maybe I could even lie. Like, oh, yeah, you know, that was actually – that was the seat I, I was on when – I don't even know. What's the biggest, most epic game I watch at Florida State? That's the thing. I never – I wasn't there – I wasn't sitting in the stands and Jordan Travis went nuts. Right. Um, you know, uh, Rick Sassan was in the swamp. Um, right. I, like, I was sitting in that when when Greg Jones, you know, ran over seven. What people about Rick to night. Sam uh, to beat Georgia Tech that one year? Yeah, 14 to 13. 2000, 2002. Three? I think it might have been three. three yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, I was there. I was there for that. That's a big one. They were down thirteen to nothing with like seven minutes to go, yeah. and they stormed back and won. Yeah. So um, check it out. Uh, there's a link probably on the Battle's End Twitter feed, and it's. Uh, all over war chant uh, on the there's a thread started by somebody called do the chop knolls i got a piece i got my piece of doke so nice and it's it's a nice little it's like a a, a wooden base and it's a plexiglass case and it's got a little uh, placard on it says authentic brick from doke campbell stadium so i mean there, there, there's there's some marketing in this it's not just aslan going to doke and, and throwing a brick in a box and mailing it to you folks so mm. um but yeah get you some and uh, help out the program you love so much MyBookie.ag, promo code WARCHANCE, gets you an instant cash deposit bonus when you sign up for the first time. Last round of Sweet 16 games today, Corey. Um, like I said, beginning of the show, good feeling on some of the games today, um, but not all of them. The Purdue 5.5 guys me a little queasy, and I think Houston right now 4.5 on Duke. Do you... Uh, you have any thoughts on those games or um, or some of the other ones going down? Creighton, Tennessee, I like that one. NC State, Marquette. Uh, what do you what do you feel about uh, that menu of games today? I like the over at NC State, Marquette. Okay, one fifty one and a half. I just think NC State just does not play defense. Really doesn't care to, and uh, Marquette can be got defensively. Um, and so I think that should be a really fun game, actually. Um, and then um, I, Duke four and a half, man. Yeah. I mean, you got ACC. like Houston. Exactly right. You saw what Clemson did, didn't you? Yeah, man. They're a six seed. Uh, they barely beat Florida State twice, and they're in the dang elite eight. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I just think, man, Houston. They're gonna. It's gonna be a slowdown. It's gonna be a slog. It always is with Houston. They play really good defense, but Duke's just got guys that make shots, and if they're making shots. Not only will they be within four and a half points, they're going to win the game. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why I'm taking the Blue Devils. I like it. There you go. Those are Corey's picks. Mine were earlier in the show. Use them uh, to your own discretion. I would also say, like, if you looked at my uh, betting slip, 
uh, from the first weekend of the college tur- uh, the NCAA tournament, you would uh, completely go the other way with what I just told you. So just be sure up. to do that too. Just warm it up. Promo requires fifty dollars minimum deposit and rollover requirement of one time deposit total, including the bonus for withdrawal for full terms and conditions. Visit mybookieag about dash us. Knowles are back, everybody. Knowles back. Uh, Link baseball team rocking and rolling. Eight three victory over Louisville. On Thursday night, game one of the series, they'll play 6 o'clock tonight and then 2 o'clock on Saturday. All right, Aslan, I'm going to ask you before you even get into it. Okay. What was the biggest development, most encouraging thing you saw on Thursday night from the baseball team? (laughs) It could just be a player. Yeah, man, come on, man. Joey Chuck. Man, I'm telling you, uh, that's impressive. (laughs) Because he was was making lefties look bad on the slider. Meat was watching that probably like, where have you been? Where was he when I was there? Yeah, I mean that was uh, uh, that was really really. Th- what do you do? Three innings. Um, it did did really well. Um, just yeah, came he, in in the seventh inning. Um, yeah. Three innings of no hit, no walk baseball. Struck out four. Right. Faced nine batters, so he pitched a perfect three innings. But but again, uh, he comes in the seventh inning in yeah. relief of Andrew Armstrong. Armstrong allows a single, walks a batter, and then a yeah. bunt. So do the math, everybody. That's that's bases loaded, no outs, Corey. Yeah. And then yep. he goes, strikeout swinging, strikeout swinging, and then he gets a ground out. So not only strikeout, strikeout, ground out. It was Louisville's three, four, and five hitters mm. with the bases loaded in a six-three game. Okay, maybe some demons are starting to get exercised here a little bit to do that. Now you got to do it on the road next time. Maybe I guess that's the next thing to prove. But man, that was that was just really impressive. That's uh, that's that's. That and he was and he was good against Florida. Yeah, man. And, and, so like now you got. I'm sorry to go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. You're gonna say I think what I was gonna say. So you go ahead. I just think, you know, I'm not being reactionary. I, I think Oxford and and John Abraham and Joe Charles were looking okay, and then things happen. Obviously in Clemson, I think like those three guys now move out of that tent of suspicion. Like, all right, now you, now you got some guys that, as you said, exercise some demons, and you feel good about. Yeah. And then the offense is the offense. Jeez. I don't even think the offense was uh was they weren't particularly it great. Didn't play, yeah, no. it certainly didn't have its A game, and it had uh, it scored eight runs. And uh, the what is he one two three four five, uh, five? The number six hitter is the guy in this game that had five RBIs, including the go ahead game winning grand slam, essentially. So that's and then in Tuesday's game, the number nine hitter had five RBIs, and the number Five hitter had five RBIs hmm. with a. I think uh, Cantu batted fifth in that game, yep. and so he had five RBIs. Lodi's had five RBIs against the Gators, and then in this one, Dinges has uh, five RBIs. And I, I that guy did Lodi's or was it Faro that had it against the Gators? Oh, you're right, it was Faro. Yeah. You're Lodi's right, Faro, is, but same thing. Faro. Lodi's is batting two forty one. Come on, Alex. Come on, man. Pick it up, buddy. But he can. It doesn't matter. He's you good in the field, though. He's so one forty-one. Yeah. Bat one forty-one. Hit a home run a weekend if you want. Yeah. Just keep doing what you're doing yeah. in the field. That matters so much more uh, than than what he does at the plate. He has been exceptional at shortstop uh, so far this year. But yeah, man. That again, it just shows you up and down the lineup. You know, I was talking to Brady actually. We were watching the end of the game when Diomez Ross is in there. Because uh, he came and pinch ran for Jaime Ferrer, mm-hmm. didn't seem like Jaime was all that fired up about that decision. <laughs> uh, but either way, I mean, Diamez is a—they had a lead. Diamez is faster and, and a much better outfielder. And when you have a lead, you got to make some defensive adjustments. But anyway, uh, good to see Diamez back. But Brady was talking about Diamez and why he doesn't play and is he going to get back in the lineup? And I'm like, I don't—I don't know, man. That the Max Williams kid's playing really well. He hits really well, and. You know, this lineup, one through nine, there's just nothing easy about it. Like, yeah, Lodis is batting 241, but didn't, didn't he hit a bomb against Clemson or two? Yeah. Um, you just – there's no breaks. If you make a mistake to any of these guys, they can put a crooked number on the scoreboard. Diamez Ross isn't necessarily that guy. Diamez Ross is a good contact hitter, very good outfielder, but he's not a guy that necessarily changes the scoreboard. All these other guys can, and that's what's cool about it. I was telling Brady, though, that it was like it kind of reminds you of the Braves. Like, that's what the Braves were built is one through nine. They can all take you deep, and they can win a game by themselves almost offensively. And that's why I was pointing out Faro, Cantu, and now Dingus in back-to-back games, hit ball had five RBIs. That's crazy. And they're not even the guys. The guys are Cam Smith and Tibbs yep. and Ferrer. 
and that's what's uh, that's what's so cool about uh, what what this offense is. Even when they don't play well against essentially a Friday night starter, the number one pitcher, they put up eight runs on a pretty good, not great, but a decent Louisville team. That's again, it's good stuff. What do you think about Andrew Armstrong? He comes in in the sixth inning. Uh, lighter goes five and two thirds. I think he struck struck out twelve, but five yeah. hits, three walks. Um, Armstrong gets out of that inning, but then obviously loads the bases in the seventh, and then Joe Charles comes in and, and gets them out of that near disaster. Uh, again, yeah, exercising some demons. Uh, Armstrong's a guy that they, I think they want to extend more than just one third of an inning out of. Uh, any yes. concerns about him, or just he's thrown a lot? Of, he's he's played a lot of baseball here, and he's been quite effective. Maybe just. Uh, not feeling this week. No, I just feel like you know what you – I mean, if you look at his role, now he gave up two hits. Uh, you know, I think he got uh, hurt by an error too. Jackson Wells, that catcher, had two – the only two errors Florida State had were by the catcher. Um, again, that infield defense, I know the catcher is technically infield, but I'm, I'm talking about the guys, you know, behind the pitcher. Um, we're exceptional again. We're really good again. The the, the defense was good. Um no, I mean, I just look, man. I think Andrew Armstrong is what he is. What is he? Is a fifth year guy? No, he's not that old. He's got to be that old. I thought he. I thought I was shortchanging him. I thought he was a seventh year guy. Um, he's a junior. He's a junior. Uh, like a COVID junior? Really? I just thought he'd been here longer. Um, but either way, you know what he is. He's he's okay. He's he's not he's not horrible. He's not impossibly bad. He's somebody that will compete. It could get you some big outs occasionally, but you know he's not going to be a guy that's a that's going to. He's just not that dude, I don't think. Like you're hoping Dorsey is when the next time he gets to pitch, and that Joe Charles might be. You know, maybe if you now I don't want they, you don't want Joe Charles having to pitch in every game, but it would seem at least from these last two games uh, that Joe Charles is much better than Andrew Armstrong. By yeah. the way. By the Armstrong. way, you're, you're, he's a senior. I apologize. He's a senior. All right. Well, I mean, I felt like I was right. <laughs> then, it, well, it felt correct coming out of me, <laughs> but I didn't want to. I didn't want to question you. So. Well, I googled it, and it said, you know, I, I type in Andrew Armstrong Seminoles, and it says he's a junior, but it was his 2023 bio that Google pulled up. <laughs> right, because course. going to Seminoles.com sometimes hasn't been very friendly to me, so. Uh, Buddy, it's not friendly to any of us. I didn't want to. I don't know who needs to listen to this. <laughs> Somebody do something over there. Um, or it's nofan.org for life yeah. from this guy over here. But yeah, so Armstrong, I mean, that's why I'm saying being a senior, having pitched as much as he is, you know, I mean, it's not anything extra special, or you wouldn't be a senior pitching at Florida State. You'd be getting ready for uh, your first minor league baseball season. So, but that doesn't mean he can't be in a, a pivotal part of this pitching staff. But I don't think he's the guy that's going to get you those pivotal, critical outs late in games. I don't know that you trust him to be that guy that's filthy because he's not. Yeah. Dorsey has shown the ability to be filthy. Charles certainly has. Our man Abraham seemed plenty filthy Tuesday yeah. night. Let's see how we, let's see if he can build on it. Yeah. So you got some options. I think Armstrong is like that steady Eddie, although it wasn't hasn't been good here lately. Um, that steady Eddie guy that you know isn't going to walk the world. He's not going to just melt down, but he's going to give up some hits. And, yeah. you know, if they fall in the right place, they're going to be uh, they're going to be run scored. But I did want to say, because I didn't see the home run he gave up until I went back and watched, against Florida, until I went back and watched the replay. Um, that is the most ridiculous home run I've ever seen. The <laughs> one that the, and that kid's an awesome hitter, unbelievable hitter. The kid from Florida, Caglione or whatever. Yeah. Man, did you see that home run? No, no. It was – he's lefty, remember. It was a pop-up down the left field line that hit, I would guess, four inches above the handle. And it still floated out of the park. Mm. Right down the line, it went probably 322 feet, a pop-up. But he's so big and strong. I mean, it counts. It went over the fence. But when you watch it, it was not one of these moonshots. Yeah. It, was a, it was a pop-up that was barely fair and barely over the fence down the left field line, like an oppo little bloop that went over. So credit to him. I mean, he got it airborne, but that was not – it wasn't a it wasn't a barrel, I guess I would say. And you know, we haven't mentioned him because he hasn't played in quite a while, but he's he's on the men. I mean, he's, he's going to be available at some point. But Ben Barrett, that's another yeah. guy that, that's played and pitched well for them. And if he can come back healthy and 
uh, effective. That just gives you another great option. So, And I also wonder if they'll let him hit some. Yeah, he was raking last year. Um, yeah, he had some really good – I mean, he had a couple of series where he had, like, multiple hits and pitch. Or, like, he had, like, four hits in a game. I, and I think he's right-handed, I think. Yes, he is. Adam so, that you know, maybe if you have a tough lefty, he can platoon with can too. I mean, they, the, the beauty is they're going to have some options, and you're right. That's somebody we need to remember. Ben Barrett is a guy that, again, I don't know that he's overpowering, but he's a guy that I think you'll be able to uh, trust – to go out there and pit and throw strikes. And if you want to maybe make a change to the weekend rotation and have Whitaker more as a bullpen guy, I don't think they're going to do that. But if that were to happen, he could be the guy that pitches in that third slot and Whitaker could be a guy you use uh, multiple days a weekend. But uh, either way, nice bounce back. Way to build on the Florida win with another ACC win. Um, and now they are uh, unbelievably 21-3. and three. And as we all know, I'm not going to do this for the rest of the season. But as we all know, they should be 23-1, and one, mm-hmm. which is incredible. Yeah. Again, they made two errors, which I hate, because both errors were the catcher, which don't even feel like they should be – they should count. They're, they're You know, the, the air, catcher catching errors should be completely different. Um, but otherwise, uh, still hit the ball pretty well. Struck out only eight times. Uh, I think they struck – and they struck – they had 17 strikeouts as a pitching staff and only struck out eight times as an offense. That's uh, – that, that you're usually going to win a lot of games when you do that, and you you pick up the ball. And as you mentioned at the top of the show, tip of the cap to the softball team, Isa Torres with a walk-off on Thursday night. That's four straight wins, I think, now for the uh, softball team. So just mowing down the ACC competition after the, the tough set against Duke. So that's good to see as well. Yeah, they uh they got they the, the offense plays man that's good and that's uh I I don't like or maybe I do like I can't decide because that was a home game too right. What's that? I don't I don't like softball and baseball playing coinciding games. Right. I I feel like yeah, there's a lot of people yeah there's a lot of people that would want to go see both. Yeah. And they you know, I would they could either stagger them so that one's on the road and one's at home or like stagger the times or something. I don't know. It just uh it seems like there's probably some people at baseball that wouldn't mind going watching softball and vice versa. Agreed. Agreed. Our guy Derek left a comment on the show from yesterday. Was it nice? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, he's, okay, he's, good, he's good. been around forever, man. He's our guy. He's a Q dog. He's in. A, oh, a, yeah, yeah, you know. okay. Oh, well, um, there. But we'll use that to launch off into a show for Monday. Uh, we we get. Can this. I say something real quick though? Just point sure, it out. Real yeah, quick. yeah. Soak up some time um, here. Uh, no, I'm not trying to soak up time, but like we'll talk about basketball obviously more as the portal. Oh, people enter the portal and then people come out of the portal in Tallahassee, but. When we're talking about the next coach at Florida State, mm. as, as you pointed out in the text, and I think we all need to understand, and I've tried to make this clear with Florida's last two hires, Louisville is is one of the, I think, one of the top jobs in the country. That yes. fan base, that city, they love that team. They're, they're, they show up when it's a good team. It's a huge venue, and they sell it out when they're good. Um, they had to go get the College of Charleston coach. Yep. So just, keep, just know that's – and that was College of Charleston. So – that's kind of what you're looking at here. You're looking at something that's probably a little below the College of Charleston as your as your next head coach. If you went ahead, if you went the head coaching route again, 40? NBA assistants, assistants at Power Five, big time Power Five programs. That's a whole different ball game. But if you want a head coach, a proven head coach, it's going to be from a school like that. Yeah, he's 48 years old. He's made it to the tournament four times. He's never won a single game. Because Virginia- he sucks. No, I'm not saying that. No, I, know, I know he's I was, Charleston, was but it's just like, hey, man, there's you know, there's upsets happen all the time. Yeah. He's been there four times and it hasn't happened. You know, West Virginia, who some might argue is a better basketball program than Florida State, they hired the guy from Drake. He's 47. He's been in the tournament three times and has never won a single game in the tournament either. Right. Um, you know, FAU lost Dusty May. They went and got Baylor's assistant coach, which to me, that sounds like a good hire. Like, I'd almost rather have a, an assistant. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's what you're fishing. A, you either get a, an assistant or... From a from a blue blood ish, I know Bay, I, Can we call Bay, Baylor a blue blood? Even though they won a national championship, they were they've been horrible my whole life yeah. until the last ten years. Um, but Show some you respect, get a, put some respect on Dave Bliss's name, though. Yeah, right. You get an assistant from Baylor, uh, something like that, or you get a uh, a coach from a small school. That's just a head coach from a small school. That's that's how it will work. Um, they, you are not going to be able to get um, an SEC coach, a Big Ten coach, anything like that. Yeah, it's, it's, I know, it's that's just the way basketball works. Like Louisville, you know, not, I don't know. Like, are they can they make a run at Bill Self or something? You know, that's crazy. But like Alabama loses Saban. Not that you know Kenny Payne was Nick Saban, but that Louisville program is a, is a really proud program, and they 
seemingly did not try to kick the tires on anybody uh, major uh, at a blue blood, but I guess that's maybe the way the sport is right now. What do you think about Andy Enfield leaving Los Angeles to go to Dallas and SMU? Is that for sure that he's going to that he's going to SMU? Yeah, I'm sorry, official? he's he's been targeted. I guess I'm sorry, okay. I shouldn't say it in such definitive terms. But uh, would you leave? I, I mean, would you leave Los Angeles to? to they're going to be in the ACC though, you know. So maybe that's, that's right. The, the that's allure right. of it. Um, hey, you get to coach against Leonard. Uh, yeah. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, I think maybe he's run his course out there. That was a horrible season. Um, and he's he's done an amazing job getting, like, lottery picks. Like, I think two of his guys this year are going to be lottery picks. And they had a losing record. Mm. So it might be time to, uh, to to go try to do something else if you're uh, if you're USC and if you're infield. I think the bloom is off that rose. Uh, certain didn't do much for LeBron's kid. No, yeah, Bronny, come kid, on, man. That ain't cool. Kid averaged less than Baba. Come transfer here. That'd be cool if LeBron's kid played in Tallahassee. Would it, though? Would it? I don't know, man. It'd be cool to have LeBron here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if, Le if LeBron's kid was here, imagine all the flights that all of a sudden would be coming to TLH. Yeah. It'd become a real airport. You wouldn't have to connect <laughs> in Atlanta or Dallas anymore. <laughs> all right. That's a wrap for us. Uh, I think Jeff Cameron show one at 3 o'clock. What was the question that uh... – that Derek was going to ask. I thought I interrupted you. No, we're going to use it for for Sunday's recording for Monday's show. Just but just so you can prep your mind for it. Okay. He, he he knows it's very early in the spring practice. So here's a teaser of what we're going to talk about on Monday show. But he wants our offensive defense or who we predict will be the offensive defensive MVP of spring, offensive defensive most improved, offensive defensive newcomer of the spring. Mm, so okay. there All you right. go. Y'all right. like football. We're going to keep talking football. They've they got a bit of a break uh, for the Easter weekend. Hope you're able to do that as well. They'll be back practicing on Tuesday. We'll be back with a show for you folks on Monday because that's how we roll. He's Corey Maslon. Thank you for listening to Wake Up War Chant, presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill.